Hey guys, it's Sarah and today's Bookless Thursday. This is a video series I do with my friend Lindsay over at Lindsay's Little Library. And every Thursday we bring you some sort of list or book topic that we feel like talking about for the week. And hmm, this week is interesting. <laughs> this is a hard one. <laughs> Lindsay came up with this idea. And at first I was like, yes, let's do it. And then I was like, ugh, this is hard. <laughs> she probably struggled too. So we wanted to challenge ourselves and give us a little scenario that if we could only read five books for the rest of this year and that's it, which five books would those be? We are obviously not doing this. No, but we thought it'd be fun. Like which ones would we choose out of the ones that we kind of already have on our radar that we do plan on reading? What would we pick as the only books we could read for the rest of the year? And there's only five. So four of mine are new releases coming out this year because I'm anticipating them. So those were the ones that first came to my mind and it was just kind of easy for me to pick those. And then I do have one backlist. Is that cheating? Maybe a little bit. But the new releases are the ones I'm super excited for and like I want to get my hands on them and read them right away. So we're just going to go with it. Okay, first one. Are you tired of me talking about this having not read it yet? <laughs> I feel like I've talked about this book in multiple videos and I still haven't, I haven't read it. Mm, it's fine. It's coming up because it's a five-star prediction for me. House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J. Mass, which is book number three in her Crescent City series and my most anticipated book of the entire year. Right here. It's in my hands and I'm procrastinating. <laughs> but it will happen before the end of April. Five-star prediction. I'm just, I'm ready. It, it's going to break me. And I, I'm not ready. I don't know why I said I'm ready. I'm not ready. It's going to break me. It'll be fine. And then I wanted to pick a book from a favorite author that I know I'm going to be reading. And I just can't wait. And I know I'm going to love it. And that's Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. This one comes out in April. I have it pre-ordered. I pre-ordered the Target exclusive because it has an extra chapter from Doug, who I love. <laughs> Love Doug. So yeah, that's 100% going to be read. And I, yeah, and I just love Abby so much. I really, really do. So I have no doubt that I'm going to love it. Um, another romance I have on there is Funny Story by Emily Henry, because I have read all of Emily Henry's adult romances and loved every single one of them. And I don't anticipate this being any different. And I've already pre-ordered this one as well. I actually got the UK cover or the cover is the same, but uh, the UK edition because it has beautiful sprayed edges. Beautiful. Um, so I already have that pre-ordered. <laughs> so um, that one comes out in April too. So yeah, very, very excited to read that one too. And then my last one that's coming out this year, which probably has competition with Sarah J Mass on my most anticipated, but I consider... Crescent City, my most anticipated, because it took a while for this one to even be announced. And then once it was announced, I was like, oh, so Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune, which is a sequel to The House in the Cerulean Sea, which is one of my favorite books of all time. <sighs> I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this book. I, I think it comes out in September. It's in the second half of the year, for sure. I, I feel like it's September. Hmm. You guys, I'm so excited for this book. Oh, I can't wait. This will 100% be a pre-order for me. And if I haven't already, I probably have already pre-ordered it. But uh, yeah, I, mm, I'm i so excited for this book. I cannot wait. And hands down, this would be on, like, if I could only read a certain number of books, this would be it. And then for my back list, I was like, you know what? Let's pick something that is on my priority reads for this year. Let's pick something that is big and would take up a lot of time so I could take my time because I can only read five books for the rest of the year. <laughs> so I picked The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I really do plan to read this this year. Again, it's on my priorities. Um, don't ask me how my priority reads are going this year. We're not going to talk about it yet. Um, but I definitely want to read this one. And I've been, I've been stiff arming it because it's not a completed series and we're in a position right now where we don't know if it's ever going to be a completed series. <laughs> it's one of those situations, but I also don't want to not read books that I really want to read just because of that. So, and I have heard from multiple people that I could even read this as a standalone if I want to, and I would be fine. So 
I'm going to listen to the people and give this one a read. But it is very, very beloved among the fantasy fans, which I am. So, yeah. So, um, three fantasy and two romances <laughs> is what I'm doing, apparently. The, yeah. Um, so, those would be the five books I, I would hesitantly pick if I could only read five for the rest of the year. Those would be the ones that I would pick. Yeah. All right. Let me know your thoughts down below. Would you pick any of these? Would any of these be part of your choices as well? Will you answer the question? If you could only read five books for the rest of the year, what would you pick? I would love to know that. That would be fantastic to get some of your answers on here. And make sure you go check out Lindsay and see which ones she picked. I have no idea what she's going to pick. So I'm excited to see what she ends up putting on her list too. All right. And with that, we're going to forget this ever happened because there's no way I'm only reading five books for the rest of the year. <laughs> but it was fun. All right. We will see you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.